Hello, welcome to Cycling Tips, David, and welcome to another That's My Bike. This week we have got, well, the Australian champion, Sarah Roy of Bike Exchange. Hello, welcome. How are you doing? Good, thank you. Okay, where are you? Where is here at the moment? Yeah, at the moment we're in Belgium, um, not too far from Ghent, uh, in a really lovely little air, uh, not Airbnb, a really lovely, lovely little family-run hotel called Leppel Bed. We've been coming here since I've been on the team, so nearly seven years, um, and we always stay in the same hotel accommodation with the men's team, and it's always really fun for this classics block to be together and spend some time with the boys as well, and, um, yeah, good to good to stay in the one location and come back to a familiar place every year. Now, you were, as you said, just a minute ago, you've been with the team for seven years through its different iterations from Orica Greenhead right through to, well, what it is now, Bike Exchange. And we're going to be chit-chatting about your new bike because you've changed for the first time in them seven years from Scott over to Bianchi. How big a change was that for you? Yeah, it was um, quite a change, uh, actually. But, I mean, even through the years on the previous bikes, we changed models from um, year to year as well. So um, it's been a good, pretty pretty smooth transition onto the Bianchi this year. Um, but I think that's partly through, you know, the experts that we get to work with, with our mechanics, um, as well as the people at Bianchi providing, you know, all the information and being really proactive with everything. So, um, yeah, it's been pretty smooth, but um, a lot of sort of equipment decisions to make as well, which I've really enjoyed this year. Was there a bit of trepidation moving bike brands or were you quite excited to, to try something new, something different? I was really happy on the previous bike. There was no problems whatsoever. I understand that there's been a change in sponsorship and it's a really positive one. But um, going from, you know, what I was on before, I was very, very happy. Um, and what I'm on now, I'm actually pleasantly surprised as well. So, um, yeah, I wasn't sure about the change, but um, but I'm really happy with it now. So, yeah, and things are going well and I'm loving the specialism at the moment. Like, really like it. What made you choose that bike over the Ultra? Because we don't see some, we, well, we haven't seen so much of that in the Peloton before. It does seem to be more of a, a like you say, a lightweight climbing bike. Yeah, the Specialismo is a little bit lighter than the Ultra, but I also find it a lot more responsive. And um, I feel that for me, it gets up to speed a lot quicker than the Ultra. Um, although the Ultra is more aerodynamic, um, I find that I can whip the Specialisma straight up to speed and um, and I feel faster on it and I feel like I have more control of the bike um, when I'm riding the Specialisma. So both very good bikes and they have their positives. But um, for me, I've decided to go with the Specialisma mainly this year. So it takes a little bit of um, choosing the equipment that you want then. Does it at the, at the end of last season or the start of this season, do they deliver a couple of bikes to you? Do you go to the to the team headquarters how does that work yeah i think it's a bit of a logistical nightmare for our team having or being australian um and having so many riders based in australia and with covid at the moment as well it makes um you know travel and um postage and things like that are really difficult so we did start the year with um just the one bike um and since coming to europe there's a lot more available to us and um, yeah, so there's a few different combinations that we've got going, especially with the classics. Each classics race as well is slightly different, you know, like Ghent Wevelgum, for example, um, only has one sort of small cobbled climb or short, and uh, we only do it twice. So in terms of time on the cobbles, there's not a lot. So you choose different equipment for that event compared to, say, Dwarves Door tomorrow, which has, you know, almost a, a I think it's over two kilometre cobbled section in the race. Um, and so then the cobbles play a bit more of a part in the race itself. So then you want to choose your equipment based off that. So, yeah, we're really lucky to have such a range of stuff going on. Now, obviously, you've done them races multiple times. So do you know exactly what you want or do you go out still testing equipment the days before the race? Yeah, not so much the days before, but weeks before, for sure. Like we came to Belgium um, recently, a couple of weeks ago, just to trial equipment. And um, I think that's an awesome level that our team is at now because for sure five or six years ago we didn't really have the means to do that. 
Um, so it's really cool to see the progression in women's cycling as well to that point where we can. Um, and it was good learning for, for me personally um, to, to trial the different equipment and, um, and to learn what I like uh, without really knowing exactly what I was riding on. So um, I thought it was really cool what our DS has arranged for us to, um, we did the Paris-Roubaix recon and we stopped after every couple of sectors and changed the equipment without sort of looking at what we were changing it to. And after each, um, after each couple of sectors where we changed the equipment, we'd, we'd write down on a piece of paper how we felt on the bike. And then at the end of the training session, we could look over and go, oh, okay, so you actually prefer these wheels and these tyres compared to someone else who prefers these these tyres and these wheels and also this tyre pressure. Um, yeah, so it was a really, really uh, effective and sort of uh, productive productive session. Um, that was a, a specific trip just to trial equipment. So can you let us into a few secrets and are you allowed to tell us what you're going to be using over the, the coming weeks? Yeah, yeah, I don't think it's too much of a secret. <laughs> um, so I've chosen, oh, like I said, you know, each race actually is a little different. Um, so for Ghent Wellbegum, for example, I was on the C60s, which are slightly deeper rim, um, and the Pirelli P0 tyres at a 28 mil, um, and they are tubulars, which are a lighter tyre. Um, and I think for Flanders, um, which is my next target event, I will likely run um, the C40s, so slightly uh, more shallow rims and um, most likely the 28 uh, P0s. Again, I like those tyres, so, yeah. Will you, will you be double wrapping your bars or putting gel under them for, for Roubaix? Yeah, I think I've got, like, really soft baby hands or something going on because I do tend to get blisters um, more than anyone else, I feel. But um, I've decided to run standard handlebars, so pretty much round um, handlebars from Vision that we've been given um, rather than the aero um, integrated bars because I feel that they are a bit more giving on the cobbles. Um, and with that, I only just run normal bar tape, just one layer, but I will be putting some um, sports tape just across my hand. Um, I, I practiced that in training without tape and it didn't go so well. Um, and then I practice it with tape and it's much more comfortable for me. And um, so, yeah, I'll definitely do that for the race. Now, obviously, being Australian national champion, have you got any custom bits and pieces? Yeah, I've been super lucky. Um, Giro helmets, for example, they've sent me a, a really cool green and gold helmet um, that sort of stands out a bit more in the peloton with um, the Cycon glasses with the yellow and they've got little green straps on the side um, and they're gold lenses as well, which is super cool. Um, and, yeah, my Giordana kit is unreal. Like, I love it so much. And it was so cool to come back to the peloton um, for Newsblood, the opening weekend back in Europe, and have so many riders um, throughout the race just mention how great the jersey looks and, and just to comment on it. Like, it's so cool. And it still happens now. I'm about five or six races deep into the season. And, yeah, the other riders are still commenting on it dur during the race, just tapping me on the back and saying, jersey looks great. And, yeah, it's awesome. Awesome. Let's, let's hope we see a, a, a lot of it. And the coming, well, classic seasons, the coming season. We wish you a lot of luck. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Um, give Cycling Tips a like, subscribe, and enjoy your riding.